So here we have a Super Famicom with a note that I put on it about a year ago, roughly. It says graphics issues. Let's take a look. I would say that those are some graphics issues. Well, funny thing about that is I tried this out right before I started rolling. I thought, hey, maybe I should make a video out of this. The screen was actually like cut off halfway and started at the bottom. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I think I know what the issue is on this one. Normally I would say it is a chip, but I think it's just capacitors. Let's uh, open it up and check it out. But just for shits and googles, let's try it again. Power it on and see if it does what it was doing before. Mm, kinda is now, yeah, you'll see that the yeah, there we go. So the screen kind of cuts in half and tethers toward the top. Let's pop this bitch open and see what we can do. All right, folks, we're back. You gotta forgive me, I've got not the most professional or best setup here for recording video while doing repairs. We have a board revision number of SHVCCPU01. This is the model with the separate soundboard taking everything apart what we're going to focus on now is these six capacitors here that uh, are in the video circuit the AV video circuit I should have uh, tested to see if this works with RF but I don't give a shit to be honest with you nobody uses RF anymore especially me so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to replace these six capacitors and see if that fixes our problem so what we got here we got two uh, 10 microfarad 16 volt capacitors and four 100 microfarad 6 volt capacitors we're going to use so what we're going to use in place of those surface mount caps we're going to use these uh, regular old ceramic or not ceramic um, electrolytic through hole capacitors here what we got here is a uh, 10 microfarad 25 volt capacitor and then we've got four of these We've got two of those and four of these 100 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. Now the thing to remember is the microfarads should be exact, but the voltage can actually be higher than what's on the uh, on the board or whatever it is that you're replacing. So let's see, hopefully we're focused. So keep that in mind. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna desolder all this fun stuff. And what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of flux on there before I do that just to help make it a little easier to get this stuff off and then we're gonna remove these caps and clean everything up just a little bit and then put new caps on so here we go I'm not much for uh, the chit chat but I guess I can talk about something while I'm doing this I'm gonna heat the pad up and then lift it on each side and then remove it that way some people like to clip them I don't like doing that because I feel like there's a uh, a possibility of messing up and removing the pad and I don't like doing that because then you got to run wires I may or may not upload a video where I actually messed up and did that so yeah don't do as I do in that respect And the thing that I always preach to anybody who's starting off doing this, first of all, I'm not an expert. I would refer to myself as a hack because I am not anywhere near an expert at this. I just do this as a hobby, but if you're going to do this, take your time. Do it right or do it fast, one of the two, but better to do it right. And I always try to angle this to where it's to your best vantage point. Even if you're recording, <laughs> don't screw it up. I've tried to make videos before and I just kind of screw everything up trying to 
make it easier for y'all to see sorry if it's not but got to do it right and sometimes using the camera doesn't allow me to do that or giving you guys the best vantage point doesn't allow me to do that stuck on there. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing gloves, a lot of the consoles that I work on are very filthy, first off. And then second, um, I just don't like getting the chemicals on my hands. A few years ago, I was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I had the worst, I don't know if it was eczema or what, but my hands would dry out like like it was no tomorrow and I would get blisters and stuff on my hands really disgusting but since I moved away from Albuquerque that has stopped but I still try not to get chemicals and crap on my hands when it's unnecessary to do so anyway that is my uh, personal bullshit most of you if you're not a subscriber already you probably don't give a shit so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna wick up these pads and clean them off and then I should probably clip that old piece off. I got way too much crap on my work table too. Makes it very difficult to move stuff around without knocking other stuff around. We're going to wick all this good stuff off and then we're going to use some alcohol and a Q-tip to clean it up. And then we are going to go ahead and put some new solder on there. and place our capacitors where they're supposed to go and everything will be all hunky dory hopefully now as I'm wicking I'm just putting enough pressure on the soldering iron that it gets the uh, the solder up I'm not pushing down hard and then scraping I'm not doing all that because that is a great way to remove those pads and you don't want to do that I mean in this area actually it's really easy to just run wires or jumpers wherever the trace needs to go but it's better if you just don't do that at all this camera even if I don't have it on autofocus and manually focus it it likes to unfocus by itself I'm not a fan of this thing it's a Canon it's Canon 700D DSLR camera. Not the greatest in the world, to be honest with you, for recording video. Don't believe the hype, what these YouTubers tell you, because it's not that amazing. It's decent, but not great. So I just like to get some of the extra flux and any other junk or impurities or whatever that are going to be in the way later on all right so we're gonna lay a little bit of flux down again some dust on there and this is just gonna help the solder flow and stick to where it needs to go so what we're gonna do here something I don't normally do when I do any kind of repairs but um, we're gonna make nice little solder blobs on the pad the can't talk we're gonna make nice little solder blobs on the pad and that way uh, because these are not through hole uh, components that were on here before but these are through hole components that we're gonna replace it with it's got a nice uh, sturdy foundation to rest on All right, that looks good enough. I'm gonna to try to keep the profile as low as possible. I should also note, which I didn't note before, is the direction of the capacitors if you're new to doing this. So for the surface mount caps, I didn't point out before. Um, 
the dark side of the cap is a negative positive side is the gray side or silver side when you're looking at the board the positive side you'll see that it's like a I don't know kind of like a shield type of shape where it's flat on the bottom and it come kind of comes angular and there's a smaller indentation at the bottom the indentation side is going to be the positive side this is the negative side just for your uh, situational awareness and then when you're looking at the capacitor here the again the dark side the all black side is going to be your positive and the light stripe is your negative and also the positive will have a longer leg on that side so keep that in mind as you're doing this we're going to go ahead and replace the uh, the 10 microfarad cap side first the smaller ones clip the legs super super easy repair to do and then try to keep the lowest profile you can while, while doing this you don't want to have the legs too long I'm sorry if you can't see this while I'm doing it it's really really difficult to do to where you guys can see everything I'm doing without moving the camera now it doesn't have to be on there perfectly it's just got to be on there and be sturdy and kind of out of the way of everything so we're not uh, <clears throat> not exactly doing this for uh, for beauty's sake we're just trying to make it effective but you also don't want to make it look like a complete amateur did it either which actually I am but <laughs> Who gives a shit? So what's going on with you guys? I um, don't have a whole lot going on in my life right now. Working a ton of hours, a lot more than I expected to when I moved out to the Portland area. Uh, my collecting has stopped completely. To be honest with you, the only thing I do, and I'm so glad now, at the time I felt kind of bad about it, like I felt like, like her action, I can do that, can't talk. I felt like an actual hoarder when I was living in Japan and I was just buying up everything. Um, I questioned the intelligence of doing that, but I've made, for the little bit of sales that I've done since I've been back home, I've made a pretty solid amount of money, um, just pure profit really, I mean, compared to what I would buy, what I would do if I was buying and reselling in the States. Uh, but again, because of the work schedule, I don't really have a lot of time for selling. And I will be selling at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo this October. So I want to make sure I save a lot of the good stuff for that. So uh, really all I've been doing as far as like video game related stuff is just like cleaning and testing all my, my stuff. Sorry, I've got this fan here. It's just completely in the way to blow all the fumes away. Anyway, um, so... I'm kind of getting my uh, my kicks, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat is super dry. Uh, I'm kind of getting my video game hunting kicks out of just like <laughs> going through stuff in my garage because I've got so much crap. It's like, honestly, I feel like I'm game hunting anytime I go looking for crap in my garage. It's great. I have a terrible video game uh, collecting addi uh, addiction and I don't find a lot of stuff out here and even if I do find stuff I just don't have time to go get it I'm at work until usually like 6 o'clock in the evening and then it takes me an hour or so to get home and I'm not trying to go out and buy video games from people all over the Portland area 
at like seven, eight o'clock in the evening. I'm just not trying to do that. So I get my kicks, my jollies from just going through the crap I still have at home. But outside of that, yeah, nothing going on as far as collecting. I haven't gotten anything really all that great or interesting. I had a pretty decent Super Nintendo pickup a couple months after I got here. Outside of that, absolutely nothing. The thrift stores here are garbage. Um, there's no flea markets. I don't know about garage sales because I just don't really have the time to go out. I kind of do, I guess, on the weekends. But I'm usually so tired, I just don't want to do anything on the weekends. Except the normal stuff like shopping and laundry and cleaning and all that other crap that you know, you're supposed to do as an adult. So that's what I do with my weekends. So we've got all this, uh, we have got all these capacitors replaced. Again, it's not gorgeous, but it's, uh, it's effective, hopefully. We will clean this up with some alcohol and a Q-tip. And we will do a very, we're not going to button everything up. I've got the shell soaking in some hot soapy water to clean it all up. While this is uh, getting repaired here, we're just going to connect the uh, power and AV cable and uh, the power switch, put a game in there and see if that actually did what it was supposed to do. I'm going to say yes. If I am wrong, well shit. I guess we'll have to hunt for some other stuff, but I'm not going to do it on camera. All right, that looks fairly, fairly decent. All right, let's put the sound module back on. We'll pop in some Street Fighter 2. See if I can do this without cutting the camera. I think I got enough time left. This will only go to, I think it's 24 minutes without cutting itself off. Anyway. Plug the power adapter in, AV adapter is in, the power switch is here. You want to be very careful because if you tap this power switch on anything that's metal, uh, a lot of times it will blow that fuse on there. I've got extra fuses but I just don't want to replace it. <laughs> so keep that in mind. We're going to go ahead and move this camera and focus on the screen here. Sorry about the uh, the lack of professionalism on this, but let's check it out and see if it actually works. Oh snap. I would say that's fucking successful. Absolutely beautiful. We'll, uh, we'll wait till it loads up a character and see how that looks. Bam! Absolutely beautiful. Alright, so let's take a look at the, the actual work that we did. So again, as I had mentioned, let me pull that out real quick just so we don't get that short. Um, not the most beautiful work in the world and it doesn't have to be it just has to be functional so if you're having any issues with your super nintendo or super famicom don't believe the morons on the forums that always say it's a ppu or sram check other things a lot of times it for me in my experience my limited experience if it's a video issue it is the capacitors uh it also if it's an audio issue it's probably one of the capacitors Somewhere, well, it'll be inside here for this revision of the board, but on some of the other ones, it'll be a capacitor right down there. Um, I would say if you have the ability to do so, try to get yourself uh, some boards to play with. If you like repairing stuff, play with uh, stuff that's already broken um, or that you got really cheap. That way, it really won't matter too much if you screw it up. I can tell you right now that I've killed way more boards than I would like to admit. Uh, in order to get to a point of fairly decent proficiency in repairing these things. So um, I guess I can swing around one more time. I think I might have decided I was going to upload another video. So this is going to be completely repetitive and redundant. But 
Uh, these are all clean, fixed, whatever, ready to go. These got issues still. These got issues still. And I have random other Super Famicoms laying around the garage that I'm still working on. So that is your graphics fix for the Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom for today. This is Jay Will of Will's VG Addiction. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.